Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Scott, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're doing a terrain project. We're going to be painting the Nexus Siphon from Warhammer Age of Sigmar. So let's go ahead and dive into how I painted this terrain piece. To get this model ready for painting, I've primed it using Wraithbone Spray Primer from Citadel. The first thing we're going to do for this project is we're going to wash all of the stone parts of the model using Agrax Earthshade. You can go as heavy or as light as you'd like on this, it just depends on how dirty and brown you want the stone to look. Once that shade has been allowed to dry, we're going to take Celestra Gray and we're going to start by doing a heavy dry brush of this all over the stone. We're going to use this to start to build up a marbled look over all the stone sections of the model. To continue building up our stone effect, we're going to take Ulthuan Gray and we're going to dry brush this over the previous layer of dry brushing, but this time we're going heavy in some areas and light in others to create contrast between the different areas on the grain of the stone. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take White Scar and we're going to do a third layer of highlighting. This is going to be a much lighter layer of highlighting. We're not looking to make the stone brighter as much as we are just giving specks of brighter color in the darker stone. Once we're to a point where we're happy with the stone, we're going to begin working on all of the metal parts of the model using Balthazar Gold as the base color. Once we've finished applying that metallic base color, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and we're going to do a heavy wash of this over all the copper. Now we are going to do some weathering effects on this model, so we're going nice and heavy with this shade. I wanted to do a Verdigris effect on this model, so to start that off I've taken two parts Scale 75's Caribbean Blue, mixed it with one part Kellyan Green Contrast Paint, and one part Biltan Green. I'm using this as a wash over all of the metallic parts of the model. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take Nihilic Oxide, and we're going to use this on all the flat surfaces of the metal. Now you want to make sure you use a bit of water to thin this down because you really want to avoid having your brush strokes show up in the Verdigris effect. Our final step in this weathering technique is to take the same mixture we used in the first step and we're just going to wash this over all the verdigris to blend it together. Now that we're done with that, we're going to begin working on some of the other details on the model. We're going to start with Retributor Armor and we're going to paint this on all of the stars that are on the top part of the model. Once we've finished applying the gold, we're going to take Lead Belcher and we're going to paint this on all the chains that are hanging down the support beams on the sides of the model. Now we're going to wash both the Lead Belcher and the gold parts using Agrax Earthshade. In order to give the model a slight rust appearance, we're going to put Contrast Griffhound Orange on sections of the chains. You might want to do two or three coats of this so that that orange color really shows through. Now some spots on the model are going to be more rusted than others, so we're going to take Troll Slayer Orange and we're going to lightly stipple this on the spots where we want the rust to appear the most aggressive and strong. Now it's time to begin working on the magic that's coming out of the siphon on this model. We're going to start by basing it all with Zarya's Purple. Decided to go with Purple Magic because I really haven't seen it done very often. Next thing I'm going to do with the magic is we're going to shade it using Druchi Violet. This is going to seep into all the cracks and help bring out the darker recesses of the magic later on. Once we've allowed that purple shade to dry, we're going to take Baraknar Burgundy. We're going to use this to layer over the previous coats of purple, but we're leaving the recesses and the edges with the darker colors in the previous steps. Our next step is to take into another layer of highlighting using Screamer Pink. And we're going to do just like before, layer over the previous colors, but not go all the way up to the edge of what we did in the previous step.
For our final layer of highlighting, we're going to take Pink Horror, and this time we're only going to pick out the most raised edges and the very center of each section of purple magic on the model. You don't want to go too heavy on this because it will just end up making the magic look pink. Now I did say not to go too heavy on the pink, well, I went too heavy on my own, so I'm taking Druchi Violet, and I've watered it down, and I'm just layering this over everything to blend everything back together, and to bring that pink back down to purple just a little bit. Now all that's left to do on the model is the base of it. So we're taking Dawnstone, and we're going to paint this on all of the brick stonework that's on the bottom of the model. For all of the mud on the model, I decided to take Burnt Umber from Apple Barrel. Now this is a really cheap paint. I did this because I'm going to be scratch building a larger piece of terrain that this is going to sit on top of, and I didn't want to spend a lot of money on the paint colors that I would do for that terrain piece. Now, as we might expect from a piece of terrain for Warhammer, there's a lot of bones on the base of the model. So we're going to take Morgas Bone, and we're just going to pick out all of the bones and skulls that are on the base plate. Now that we've finished up applying all three of those colors, we're going to bring out Agrax Earthshade one more time, and we're going to use this to wash the gray, brown, and cream colors that we just painted. The last step on this model is to take Wraithbone, and we're going to dry brush this over all of the base of the model. And with that, we finished painting this terrain piece. Thank you so much for watching today. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, go ahead and tell me down in the comments what you think about this terrain piece. And then let me know what you might like to see for future videos. I've been thinking of doing more videos about terrain. Go ahead and let me know what you think down in the comments. As always, have an amazing day, and we'll catch you in the next one.